I first saw Elder Souls, I was for the most part unconvinced that it would be worth my time. Sure, the pixel was pretty, but the same can be said for a dozen games on the current market. Still, I'm a sucker for brutal difficulty and pixel art, so I checked out their website, joined the Discord, and as luck would have it, a demo was announced the day next day. I decided to try this pixel art bosh rush for myself, to the detriment of my sanity. Hello YouTube, my name is Darkenblade Gaming, and this is my review of the Eldest Souls demo. From the beginning, the game was beautiful. From the dreary pier of the Crusader's Landing, to the windswept wastes of the abandoned battlegrounds, to the eerie emptiness of the Citadel, this game just looks gorgeous. The attention to detail is apparent in every facet of this demo, from a lonely tent, its occupant long gone, to the spear stuck in the ground as you battle one of the game's titanic bosses, every part of the map feels unique, and the eerie, unnerving soundtrack only augments the game's dark atmosphere, even when it rises to a crescendo during one of the game's many climactic boss fights. Speaking of boss fights, that's what this game is built on. No normal enemies, no area challenges, just massive baddies just waiting for you to put your sword through their skull. Though the developers have promised some hidden puzzles in some side areas, the demo shows none of that, just boss fights and the few lonely inhabitants of this ruined citadel. But those bosses are no pushover, as to be expected from any game brave enough to put souls in its title. Altogether, I probably spent around 3-4 to four hours on this demo with the majority being spent on the game's final boss, the angelic god Azakel, whose screen-sweeping laser blasts and deadly melee attacks claimed my tiny crusader's life many times. It never really felt unfair though, I was always the one who slipped up, not the game. In this demo are some of the best boss fights I have played in a long time. For example, the first boss, the massive lycanthropic beast known as the Watchdog, it killed me quite a bit, but it also taught me about the game's crucial mechanics. The boss's massive health bar and lack of a range attack incentivized me to stay far away and dive in with slashes, which happens to mesh very well with the game's bloodthirst mechanic, a tool that would prove invaluable in the future boss fights. By charging my sword, I could dash in a direction without consuming one of my valuable dashes, and if I used it to close the distance to my foe, I would empower my blade, increasing my damage, speed, and allowing me to heal by hitting the boss. This mechanic could easily have been overlooked and become one of the reasons for a steep learning curve, but instead this first boss teaches you how to use it and shows you the potential that can be unlocked in future boss fights. Since we just talked about the first boss, let's go to the second, the monolithic knight known simply as the Guardian. While the Watchdog showed players the tools at their disposal, the Guardian shows you what the game is going to use against you, to kill you, a lot. The Guardian has a lot of health, two phases that are quite different from each other, and it hits like an absolute truck. On my playthrough of the demo, it took me half an hour to get past him, more than any boss in 90% of the games I've played. However, not once did the Guardian feel unfair. Each time I failed, it was because I made a mistake. I messed up. I should have done better. Though a couple times I did get stuck against the terrain. But that's the terrain's fault, not the boss's. But the trouble started when I got to Azakel. I spent over two and a half hours and three failed recording attempts fighting this boss, and I got to the point that I was just considering quitting. This stemmed from two problems. One, Azakel's melee attack was bugged so it showed far less telegraphing than the developers intended. This, combined with the fact that he tended to spam it and the high damage of said attack, caused the fight to be much less enjoyable than it should have. It's also a bit misleading since everything else about Azakel, from his design to how his attacks work, suggest a caster boss that attacks from far away, and yet his most powerful attack was a simple melee swipe. And the other problem was that the dodge roll's immunity frames were not the best. You dodge through an attack only to still get hit. This wasn't a problem for the other two bosses since they didn't have very many projectiles, 
but Azekel's laser beams fell victim to this problem many times. As you can probably tell, it was not fun. Luckily, both of these were fixed in a patch that was released after I had already beat the demo. To wrap things up, Eldest Souls clearly understands how to make a great boss fight, and considering this is only a fraction of the game's content, this is one game that will definitely be making its way into my games library when it releases this summer. My name is Darkenblade Gaming, and I hope you all have enjoyed my review of the Eldest Souls demo.